Hey guys, and welcome. Today on ATPL Theory, we're going to be talking about lift, how it's generated, and what you don't know. So there are many theories on how lift is generated out there, including websites, various textbooks, which you may well be studying for your ATPLs at the moment, and unfortunately, the theories, or how they're explained, are not quite right. So I'm going to clarify and tell you exactly how lift is generated on an aircraft today. So the incorrect theory on how lift is generated is sometimes referred to as the longer path or equal transit theory. With this theory in mind, if we had air particles hitting the leading edge of an aerofoil, we would see as it's a longer distance over the top than the bottom, the theory would state that the speed would increase over the top and the speed would decrease or be slower than the top at the bottom so that the particles would meet at the trailing edge and that higher speed from Bernoulli's theorem would give us a lower pressure. So you'd have low pressure at the top, high pressure at the bottom, and that difference in pressure would generate the lift. This is somewhat true, but not correct. There are two main problems with this theory. So the fact that an aerofoil has a longer distance over the upper surface than the bottom surface does not generate lift. It does generate a difference in pressure, of course it does, but it doesn't generate lift. A very easy example, a paper aeroplane. A paper aeroplane has a completely flat wing, yet it still manages to fly. A uh, fighter jet, lots of them come with symmetrical airfoils, so they have the same distance over the top than the bottom surface. They still manage to generate lift. That's point one. Point two is the theory that states that air molecules meeting at the leading edge have to then meet at the trailing edge. So for that to happen, of course, the upper surface molecules have to travel faster than the lower molecules to meet there at the same point. Two molecules that are at the same point at the leading edge do not necessarily have to meet up at the trailing edge. In fact, the speed over the top part of the wing is substantially faster than the bottom part, meaning that the molecules actually reach the trailing edge on the top much faster than they would on the bottom, and they will not meet up. There's no physical requirement for them to meet up at the trailing edge. So that's point two debunked. So let's talk about how lift is really generated. So it's that deflection that the curvature of the aerofoil creates that generates lift, not the difference in distance between the top and the lower surface generating a different pressure. Now what that curvature does is as airflow hits that aerofoil, it travels over and under it, of course. When it reaches the trailing edge, depending on the angle of the aerofoil, that wind is deflected downwards in this case. And it's that deflection with Newton's law, one reaction will create an equal and opposite reaction, a deflection downwards, we are going to generate an equal force in the opposite direction. That is lift. That is what is pushing our airplane up. Of course, there is still lower pressure and higher pressure, which will add a little bit, but the main source of lift is due to that deflection of the air due to the introduction of an aerofoil within that airstream. I've left a link in the description. Uh, it's a short one minute video, definitely worth a watch. It's an experiment that Babinski did at Cambridge University where he introduced a little bit of smoke into the airflow with a aerofoil in that airflow and you can see exactly what I'm talking about. I really hope that's given you a good understanding of how lift is generated on an aircraft. If you like this video, please like, share and subscribe. All the best, till next time.